Day. And I'm Richard Day. We're both chiropractors. We've been in practice together for 11 years. Married for 10. With three beautiful little girls. We know it's possible to have an exceptional practice that's built around your life. Because we've done it. So we've created this podcast. The Lifestyle Practice Builders Podcast. We'll interview chiropractors, answer questions, and bring you resources to help build and grow your practice. So let's get this party started. Welcome back to the Lifestyle Practice Builders Podcast. I'm still your host, Dr. Haley Day. Today, I sat down with Chen Yin, an expert at helping chiropractors grow fulfilling practices faster without having to do it the exhausting, extroverted way. Chen's mission is to wake up the planet and change the way we treat illness and health. This can happen only if more chiropractors and holistic practitioners get the word out there. So keep listening to hear Chen's tips to grow your practice using MD referrals and other strategies for growing during the current pandemic. Hi, Chen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. Thanks for having me. So before we get started here, I'm curious, how did you go from being a pharmacist to giving chiropractors business makeovers? Well, so I started out as a pharmacist on Native American reservations and at first really enjoyed the traveling and the adventure, getting to know different tribes and cultures. And But at, uh, after a while, I started feeling dissatisfied going to the pharmacy. I, would, I remember this one time I gave this woman her Prozac medication and I just felt so angry, angry not at her, but, but really just what our healthcare system was putting in front of her as if that were the only option and I was endorsing it. The truth was that, you know, when I was younger, we grew up in a family that hardly took any medications in contrast to seeing people come in and leave with bagfuls, 15, 20 medications as if it were candy. And then uh, also little kids getting immunization shots and, and then leaving with a cocktail of medications, even when they weren't hurting, that drove me crazy. And you know how sometimes in moments in life where you might feel like, I don't really like what's going on, but I don't really know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Well, that was what was happening to me. I I wasn't really sure what exactly to do, except I had to get out of there. So, um, but one thing I noticed was that other pharmacists around me were unhappy and and I thought, hmm, what if I could get them into jobs that they enjoyed more? So fast forward five years, I had started and grown a recruiting business to seven figures and back then, I used to think that if I just made more money, then, then everything, you know, I could just do what I really cared about outside of work. But it didn't show up that way for me. I went through this time frame where I did a lot of soul searching. And on the other side of it, I realized, you know, I need to stop pretending. There's just still a big part of what I was doing that was primarily selling my soul for people to be on drugs. And Um, And I think that chiropractic and other holistic options are so much better than, than what a lot of people actually know about that's available to them. And a lot of people, you know, it's, it's so much better now than it was before receptiveness to chiropractic and other um, holistic options, but it's still not happening quickly enough. And I don't think that it's going to be, you know, the drug companies or insurance companies or government changing things. It really starts with chiropractors and other holistic practitioners also really, really getting the word out about, you know, about what you do. So people are asking for it. And I think that's when things will really change. And so uh, that's what led me to help chiropractors and other holistic practitioners, functional medicine practitioners and other practitioners with growing their practices because many went into it to help people, but not necessarily run a business. And then, you know, out of school and wondering, okay, I'm supposed to figure this all out. It's just too overwhelming. Right. So, um, so since then we've helped a lot of, of docs and, you know, for example, clients of ours include the, um, past president of American uh, chiropractic association sports council, um, the recent president of the American association of naturopathic physicians and, you know, American Society of Acupuncture um, board member too. But, you know, and also we have, we've had clients who are totally brand new uh, starting out wondering what to do or to, to uh, already making six figures and, and being at a plateau. And so, so yes, yeah, so that's, that's been the, the dirty and it's been really fulfilling. So good. I'm glad you've kind of found a calling in a sense. So I know yes. that can be feel, you know, I did that after college, not sure what I was going to do. And it took a couple of years to decide to go to chiropractic school. So I, I really know that struggle. 
I'm wondering, you've been in lots of chiropractic offices then. What are you hearing from chiropractors is their biggest struggle right now? So well, there are a couple things that I'm hearing right now is certainly needing more new patients because, you know, even if, if people are coming back into the practice, um, there some, you know, some practices are experiencing more of a dip um, since this whole, whole COVID thing. And then, and then hearing that money is tight as well, that I can't afford it or, um, you know, things like, well, I've, I haven't been out of work. I have been out, I have been out of work for a little bit. So, you know, just thinking more twice about the money. Another thing is also from newer docs and, and those graduating right now, starting a practice in, in this climate, you know, what is, what is, um, how do you generate interest when you're just starting out and you don't know anyone in the area and what, could a new model of practice look like, especially if we're going to be shut down in the fall again, potentially, um, mm-hmm. and and then navigating, you know, what, if can't see patients, what, what to do. So those are, and also those big student loans are still an issue. And you have so much money nowadays over, you know, <laughs> over a couple hundred thousand dollars sometimes. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. And dra- graduating into an economy that's lagging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, my husband and I graduated during the housing crisis. So, Mm. and that was not an easy time either. And, and I think with this, not knowing when, you know, how the whole COVID is going to play out is, is a hard thing. Where do you see things going? Any predictions about long-term impact of COVID on practices? So there are a couple things that I'm, 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 I foresee happening. Well, first of all, in terms of predictions, there are some economic predictions out there. So when this is earlier on during the COVID time uh, when it first happened, but Paul Krugman, who is a Nobel Prize winning economist, um, so because you know the the thought is well, what kind of a, an, a recovery will we have? You know, is it going to be a, a V-shaped yeah. recovery? Is it going to be a W-shaped recovery where it dips twice kind of a thing and then comes back? Or is it going to be an L-shaped recovery that like kind of flat for a while? And so um, Paul Kirkman he, uh, said at that point in time was saying, hmm, he thinks it'll be more of a Nike swoosh recovery. And uh, lately I've been hearing more from economists and, and um analysts about hmm, maybe it's more like a W recovery or maybe even an L recovery. So, you know, it's just, it's unpredictable and there, regardless of, of what kind of a recovery we have, I think there are a couple things that, that uh, will likely happen. One is that people are going to be more tight on their spending, but then people who have the money will still also have the money to spend. I mean, even, for example, when you were talking about the, the downturn with, that you've experienced when you had graduated. So, so during, even during those times, people had the, who had the money had money, still had money. And in uh, low recession times and uh, you know, Great Depression, even, people who still had the money had the money. And then another prediction I have is that there will be more competition with social media and online advertising. And I think that because there, you know, for, because of what had happened with with COVID and and people staying home more and being online more, there's just more interest in in uh, viewing things more online, and so more businesses are also wanting to get into getting in front of people more online. So it's going to be more saturated with that, and so there's going to also be paid ads like paid social media and things like that. Will I believe will will likely become more expensive as well as a trend. And then, so what that means is, you know, it'd be helpful to have other avenues to, to bring in patients in the practice and and not just depend on, you know, paid advertising, if that's a big part of what what you might be doing currently. Another thing that I'm noticing is that in terms of what I foresee is that I think there's going to be a, uh, a demand for a, a, a niche in that, uh, you know, certainly was there before, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big I I wouldn't say it was a big part of a lot of chiropractors' practices or a big specialty, Um, but things like house calls, I think, are going to be, uh, at least in the near future, you know, perhaps more more in demand because especially when people are afraid of of going out (laughs) if a a, a chiropractor actually comes to to their home and, and, um, you know, takes those precautions and that could make things more more convenient for, for people. And in terms of... The, the with what's going on, I think there are a couple of things that will be really important for 
for chiropractors and uh, now and coming up here is being good at navigating the I can't afford it kind of a thing. And, and then it's also even more important to set yourself apart because again, you know, there are still people with money willing to, to get help because you're, you're in one of the best professions, healthcare, people still need healthcare, even if they might not buy a new car right now. So, or new clothes right now. So there's still a need. It's just a matter of really setting yourself apart so that people feel like, you know, I, I do want to see my, my chiropractor. I want to see a chiropractor. Another thing is that, I, with, you know, the potential of things coming back in the fall or just like you mentioned, Haley, like things being unknown. So, so having other avenues of, of bring in another stream of income beyond just seeing patients and generating revenue from that one avenue is also important to explore. So, so that way, you know, if this, this uh, happens where uh, you can't see patients in person, then there's, there is another avenue to still help people and, and, and bring money in the door. Those are all great. I, I've definitely seen a resurgence or surgeons in house calls, I would say, or people's interest mm-hmm. in it. You know, if I can't do this, maybe I can do that, or they've lost their space maybe. And so that they've, you know, started going to people's houses and then also definitely the people wanting that. So that's great. And then always, we talk about a lot, setting yourself apart. And I think getting online and reconnecting with patients and, and letting them know you're there and and all those things are great. What are a few tips about getting the practice busier right now outside Mm -hmm. some of those? Yes, and you you touched upon when just now one of the things that that uh, I recommend as a very low hang fruit tip. So I have three key tips, and the first one is to actually stay even more connected with existing patients and educate them, and plus also ask for referrals. And the reason for that is because, so if, as long as you have some patients, they're still the most, you know, they're, they're the ones who trust you the most uh, compared to anyone else right now um, and your, and your immediate connections. And some of them may not be coming in because they either might not realize that, that it makes sense to come in or they might be concerned. So part of it is about educating them on um, on why it is even important, even more so right now to come in, you know, for some of them, it it may make Uh sense, right. But for some, maybe it not, but just to be able to educate as a whole. So, um, and then, and then asking for referrals as well. So when you have that relationship with, with your existing patients, how do you actually translate that connection to also helping more people they know too? So having a structure with how to ask for it without feeling like you're being, you're needing to be um, gimmicky or or pushy can be helpful. Now, as far as a a few key immediate strategies that, that um, you can use right away would be sending something like whether it's email, texting, or social media, uh, sending things about, you know, whether it's educating about why it's important to come in right now, a topic about that, and then the protective measures you're taking at your clinic. Also address the most common concerns people have about coming in. So sending a series of, of emails or that talk about that, and then including a call to action in, in the email. So for example, here's a call to action from the consistent patients formula for introverts. So um, one is book your such and such, you know, appointment now about that health issue you've been putting off getting checked out or book such, such and such now about that health issue you've been ignoring because you haven't had the time. Um, here are a couple of other options. So, um, let's see, take care. Well, okay. Some other things you can incorporate in, in that, for example, take care of yourself by putting yourself first today is especially important to take care of your health during these times. Um, and then, so those are a few email uh, samples and then a, a few text samples are, uh, cause, and one great thing about texting is that more people are actually opening texts now and checking, you know, checking their texts compared to email. Mm-hmm. And, um, but a mistake that I see a lot of chiropractors make when they are doing texting, if they're doing it is to, um, like it might feel a little too mass texting like mm-hmm. right like what do we do when we get a mass text it's like oh 
ignore it or look at it later. <laughs> so, um, so instead of that, something that is more personal, something like I've been thinking about you, excited to share that we're open. How are you? Or maybe if you've already been open or if, if they, you know, after that first text, you could send something like it's time for a tune up or it's time to book, book an appointment. I have a few slots left this week, Tuesday, you know, two, four or Thursday, five or 7 PM, text me back. If you or someone you'd wanted to refer or wants to take one of those spots. And this is one thing that one of my chiropractor clients did during this, like when she was, um, actually she did this during the whole COVID time in terms of, because she was still open at that time. Um, and then when she would have cancellations during the day, then, then she would actually text something like this out and she would get those, those uh, canceled appointments actually filled up more by doing this. And notice that in this, this particular texting script too, notice it, it says, text me back if you or someone you had wanted to refer wants to take one of those spots. So, you know, sometimes, um, you know, did you know that 89% of uh, people who are satisfied with your services are willing to refer her, but actually only 29% actually do refer, because this is something that was done in a study once. And why do less than half the people refer? It's, it's usually because of one of three reasons. And one of them has to do with not being necessarily forefront of their, in their mind, right? So, or maybe having, you know, given the referral, but then that person needs to hear it a few times before coming in. But when you do this, something like this, whether it's now or, or beyond COVID-19 times, this, this, could, this simple texting script that I just gave can, can be bringing more patients in the practice, um, you know, when you're having a slow week. Yeah, I think I've, all of us are craving connection right now and talking, mm. and we're talking to more people, I feel like, reaching out to family members and friends to make sure they're doing okay, and something like that might come up, so it is always nice to ask for the referral. Another thing that we found useful is supporting local businesses and, and helping promote them, and in that, they're helping to promote us, so I think everyone's trying to help everyone out so that we can stay on top of the economics of COVID. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's great that you bring that up with the, you know, the collaborating and helping each other out. And, and yeah. And it comes from a very genuine place to, mm -hmm. to boost their post or, or bring it to your audience's attention. And then a lot of times they'll share it back. So, um, so what other strategies that are working well, during this time, do you think, or for your clients? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I will share that uh, now. And um, before that, I also want to make sure, because I, I thought about, uh, you know, these templates and things that I'm giving out and, you know, instead of furiously writing it down. So I thought it'd be helpful for your listeners to, if they want it, um, to be able to download it. So I'm going to give, let me give a link out. And so for those of you who want the, the email texting and, um, I also have social media, uh, few social media templates that you could literally just swipe, you know, in terms of get, actually get ideas from and, and incorporate in yours. And um, so you can go to introvertedvisionary.com forward slash lifestyle um, practice. So introvertedvisionary.com forward slash lifestyle practice. And as far as other strategies, so another strategy that is working really well for our clients right now is um, to actually have ref referrals happening from medical doctors and other holistic practitioners and health practitioners. So this is something that we're, for one, let's talk about MDs. You know, MDs have thousands of patients in their practices. And many of them have patients who aren't being helped right now with just pills and, and surgery. And, and you have such an opportunity to help their patients. And when they have thousands of patients in their practices, you know, actually sending you three, you know, to five referrals, even a couple referrals a week, it's really, it's so, do, you know, it's such, such a reasonable thing. And they do have a need for it. And they do are willing to refer if they actually know about you and, and trusted in you, because they're always looking at how can I get good outcomes for for my patients. It's just that their toolbox is more limited because they've been primarily trained on diagnosing really well and, and then giving drugs and, and surgery is, is the typical model. And so, um, 
The other thing is that patients are asking for other options too. So there's a, I remember seeing a Palmer, a college thing that was printed out about their findings of, from a Gallup poll. And, and it was like, you know, 50 or 50% of, of people have tried chiropractic in, um, in the States. And so and more people are trying chiropractic and people are asking for other options. So, and then another thing is that there's, there's going to be a huge shortage of MDs by 2025. I mean, the, the, there are, uh, publish things out there about this. And it's just a fact, you know, that it's, it's bound to happen. And so, so with, for example, um, this, I have to look at the, the time frame of these stats, but I remember seeing a, a graph of just even looking at a, one sliver of the kinds of patients that chiropractics, ch- chiropractors help with. And it's just one little sliver because I know y'all can help with even more than this, but just in terms of pain wise, there was like 65.4 million visits a year with, with, I think it was just with, back pain so so then there's just uh, my point is <laughs> there's a need and the nice part about this is that when you set things up once you could and get that relationship going you you really only need a handful of people who are your biggest champions and um, you could be getting referrals for for even years to come and doctor referrals are often a much better way of growing a practice in the sense that compared to to you know, people seeing ads about you or just hearing about you from something else because they have the trust, you know, of the doctors of their do- doctors or mm-hmm. already. So yeah, I one of my most recent new patients, she had a referral from her doctor, and I asked her how that came about. If they referred her to our office or if, to her insurance, and she said that she actually had to ask for it, which she didn't need, but so the doctor was not handing them out. And, and so I think that connection, you know, between the chiropractor, me and that MD is very important to not only, you know, for me to get more referrals, but for the doctor to know about chiropractic and realize that it can help and and get the results like you're saying they want with their patients. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I often hear chiropractors tell me they have thought about getting in with MDs, but they run into challenges. Would you talk about some of the common challenges you've seen when trying to establish those relationships? I would say a few key ones that I often hear. So one is, well, where do I start? Uh, or having a good conversation, but no referrals. And, and then having trouble getting, or maybe even before that, you know, having trouble getting past the gatekeepers. I think one of the most common things I hear too is feeling intimidated or think that it might be too much work to get going. So then they never try. But the truth is I have clients who have full practices primarily from doctor for all. So it's, it's definitely doable. And, you know, quite honestly, even, especially during the COVID times, I, I would say some of my clients who were continue to be busy during those times, they, um, it was because of things they, they set up before that they had a good solid practice of avenues of bringing patients in, including doctor for all. So, um, and in terms of uh, some of the, I would say some of the biggest mistakes that a lot of chiropractors end up making when they're trying to get in with, with MDs. So here are some of them that, that I, I often see. So one of them is uh, sending a letter and sending this, the, like, lots of letters to to doctors in the area. And, or, and why that doesn't work. I mean, just think about it. If you get a a letter from this random um, person, even if they're a provider, it's like, well, okay, I'll look at this later, right? Or maybe it mm-hmm. ends up in the <laughs> trash from your front office person um, screening them out. Um, another is another mistake is is expecting referrals from mainly one conversation. So sometimes I'll hear from chiropractors sharing with me when they've tried it and then they, they think that it doesn't work. And it's like, well, what did you do? Oh, I, I had this really good conversation with them, but I just haven't gotten any referrals from them. <laughs> so, so another mistake is that giving up too early, which ties into that. So mm-hmm. whereas, you know, just having a, and thinking of this as more of a relationship and, and then having a, a way to approach them and, and also educate them, plus uh, get to them to the point to where they would start referring is really key. And, uh, and it doesn't have to take forever either. So it's just a matter of knowing what to do. For example, I had a client, a chiropractor client of mine who we worked on this and, and literally within a couple of weeks time frame, she, um, she got her foot in the door and got her first 
um, doctor referrals from this one, one doctor she hadn't gotten referrals from. And then um, another mistake I see is that that concern of seeing you as competition, um, you know, just thinking, well, they're not going to refer or I haven't had a good experience before because, you know, these doctors in my area don't refer. So if that's the case, then likely you're going to attract people who, who are like that too, because that's the kind of energy, you know, that you're putting out. It's like, Oh, no one's going to refer to me because everybody is not going to want to refer. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, if they've referred in the past, it just was the wrong person. Then they're more likely to refer to you. If once they meet you and understand that you, you fit the criteria of working with them and. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then there are, are, it's, it's true. A lot of doctors aren't like a lot of MDs don't, won't refer to chiropractors, unfortunately, and that needs to change. And we need to, we need to educate them so that that does change, but we don't really need everybody referring either. We just need a handful of MDs who are your biggest champions. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I think we're making good strides in that. It's of course going to be slow, but I think there are medical schools that have chiropractors come speak and and talk on chiropractic. And I think that's a a good step in the right direction. I know it's not everywhere, but one here and one there is a good Mm -hmm. thing. So a lot of, a lot of lessons to be learned in those four things, four mistakes that you said that could tie to other things too. So what would you recommend doing instead of those? What's, what's a good way? What's working now? to connect with doctors? Sure. So I think that one, one important thing initially is to have more of a strategy and then also with which kind of, of doctors are good to get in with as well. And because what I find is that most chiropractors go straight to um, like what, so we help our clients with, with this, their systems that they can plug into to, Mm -hmm. to uh, actually start getting those doctor referrals and, um, one thing I, I often notice is that it's like so, uh, people just jump straight to step three, which is about, um, you know, kind of trying to get in with the doctors without much preparation and of, you know, thinking hmm, who should, who would be the best um, kind of provider and then, and then getting things ready, you know, just getting some, some key things in place before starting to reach out because it'll be more successful that way. And so one thing is to think about what, for example, if you have more of an insurance-based practice, I mean, sorry, if you have more of a cash-based practice, then you, you may want to, to connect with physicians who primarily also accept cash. So it's just um, that that won't end up being so much of a concern, you know, to come see you. Um, that's just one simple thing. And then in terms of what to do to actually um, get their attention right now, especially when they might be busy during these times and, uh, and then you might not want to be going, going out you know, meet to doctor's office in person and that kind of thing. So one thing that's worked really well for our clients right now is doing a, a short video that um, brings up some key points and, and then leads to getting those referrals happening. And so I I actually worked on this with, with a client of ours recently and she did exactly that. And it was really cool because then uh, she got interest from, from that physician and that she wanted to get in with, and she can use that. Like that doesn't have to be like, she can change up the beginning of that video and it could be sent out to other other doctors or, you know, or even just use, use that, mm-hmm. that video too. And then it's more automated, you know, in the outreach instead of feeling like you always have to be doing stuff to, to, <laughs> to do the outreach. Another thing that's working really well. So, uh, um, a car, another chiropractor kind of mine, um, just, is doing this right now. And he has been reaching out to physicians through LinkedIn and, um, and then getting their interests and then hopping on zoom meetings, um, to chat. So, yeah. And then, then it's just important to have the other things in place that, that actually start you know, having this, you know, have a system in place that start so that you start actually getting referrals from, from it. So. Okay. And I think some people might come up against, they have this feeling that they're not going to be able to get to talk to the doctor. Somebody's going to stop them in their tracks and they really won't get past the front desk or calling and leaving a message. What kind of advice do you have for getting past those gatekeepers? So uh, there are a couple of uh, things that, that I would recommend. One is through your existing patients, because 
if you have mutual patients, if you have a patient that already sees a medical doctor and then you're getting good results for your patients, that's a great way to get your foot in the door because you're, you're getting introduced by a mutual patient. Another thing is that you could collaborate with MDs right now who do COVID-19 testing because maybe some of your patients might need COVID-19 testing and then you, you aren't doing it. Or maybe you could actually start doing some of those testing if it's kosher with the, you know, with the laws for state and profession, what you're doing. And then that way, they, there's a reason to actually you know, connect and develop that relationship. So another way to get past the gatekeeper is to interview them. So uh, one of my one of my clients did this, and was actually not just one. <laughs> I'm thinking of so quite a few, but in terms of I can think of two that really stand out for me. So one of them uh, really wanted to have this one physician in the area refer to her more, but he wasn't he was referring to this other practitioner. And so uh, I suggested that she, she interview him and, and then we worked on what she was going to ask and all this. And, and it was really cool because she interviewed him and uh, it was also aired on Facebook live. And he was so excited about it. This is a medical doctor. So he, he was really excited and, and sh- oh, cool. would show it to his patients. Uh-huh. And, and then she also put it up on, on her website. So it, it helped boosted the credibility of her, you know, just being involved with that interview as well. And what was really cool about it was that she got seven referrals from that MD that week. And um, that's, nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause it, you know, she, then through that interview, they were able to connect and he was able to also understand more of what she's up to. And then, and that connection was just built further. So she, you know, he ended up referring, um, another client of mine, we just did this recently where, um, she interviewed another practitioner and this person wasn't an MD. It was another, another, um, holistic practitioner. And what was really cool was that uh, that practitioner actually ended up giving her a referral, uh, you know, from after doing that interview, because, you know, then that person also learned more about what she did. So those are a few hacks as far as go around strategy. Um, in terms of, of approaching doctors with, with more, with through your existing patients. So one thing that I've also decided to include for those of you who wanted to download templates that I'm giving you from, from today. So, um, are the interview today? Well, I will also be giving you the template for, well, how do you approach a doctor when you do have a mutual patient? Cause just because you have a mutual patient, they, they are busy too. So how are you going to be able to get their interest? So I'll make sure to, to, um, include that in the templates. Okay. That would be great. Mm-hmm. So beyond these tips, what else is needed to be successful for the MD referrals? Any other things that come to mind? So a couple of things I would say is being able to continue to keep the doctor in and the medical doctor, or other, you know, potential refer in that keep you in their minds. And uh, that could include, giving them uh, studies that you access to studies or just other kinds of things that, that actually help them just remember you and having a, a system that keeps you on their radar without bothering them and, and a system that also multiplies the referrals that you get too. And plus, you know, for those of you who want to get in with doctors for whom you don't have a mutual patient, then, you know, how do you get past the gatekeepers? And yeah, and these are in part of, part of the reason why I know so much about this and, and also um, help our clients with the shortcuts. This is because I'm, I've actually worked in different settings with MDs. So in the hospital setting, outpatient, at Merck and at FDA. So I've worked with them in different settings that what would actually make them refer versus not. So you're really giving shortcuts to that. Your perspective is appreciated by everyone because I think, you know, we all wonder how can we do that? What's the best way to do it? How can we do it without turning off the other person, the MD, and make it work for us? And for them too, I think it can be a mutually beneficial relationship. Yes, for sure. What's another strategy that you're finding is working well in this climate? So another strategy that's working really well right now is educating people more online. Why? Because people, more people are checking things out online. And then also for those of you who are doing telehealth, um, because I know that some of you are, 
whether you're, um, you have chiropractic patients you're doing consults with telehealth, or maybe you're, you're doing more functional medicine that way. So this, in terms of this strategy that I'm, that I'm going to be sharing, can also help you with booking more telehealth appointments. And then for the city who might uh, want to develop new streams of income, when I work with our clients, we usually work on you know putting different income streams into the practice. And there's actually a lot of different possibilities that many chiropractors haven't thought about. Um, here's here's one. For example, are there things that you say over and over again that you feel like you sometimes a broken <laughs> record for your patients, and and then even if you say it over and over again, they don't always remember. And um, so, one thing that you could do is, could you actually put together something that is educational and helpful, and that would be um, put together in an automated way? So, for example, an automated course or virtual course kind of thing that mm-hmm. that you could charge for. And that um, people, whether they are your patients or not, could actually purchase it. And so, and then there are other uh, possibilities for other streams of income, whether it's offering products or private labeling supplements or, you know, other kinds of things that, that could be supportive. But in terms of getting the word out about telehealth or another stream of health or just not another stream of health, but another stream of income, or just even with getting more patients in the door. What doesn't work so well typically though, if you're going to to get people's attention online is what I was talking about before, which is, you know, just ads, for example, or just social media posts. Why? Because there is more competition online nowadays too. So one, one thing that um, is really interesting is if you think about, for example, Dr. Josh Axe, I'm um, mm-hmm. chiropractor and, you know, has real, a multi-million dollar business and online and, uh, or um, Dr. Mark Hyman, functional medicine, <laughs> or Dr. Arlen Christensen, who's he's actually a New York Times bestselling author and uh, helps people with more homo- hormone related uh, kinds of things. So what do are, what are these practitioners have in common? They all speak. They started their businesses with speaking and they are still speaking even when they have this huge online presence. And as a matter of fact, I have a client of mine who used to see Dr. Josh Axe in his practice. And he said, oh yeah, I know he, he, he built his practice up by speaking. <laughs> so in terms of speaking, what, what can you do with that? If uh, and, and also what, why, why is that uh, so effective? I think it's because, you know, when people aren't coming, it's because they don't really know how you can help. And but when you're actually in front of them, they're listening to you, whether you're in front of them in person or they're listening to you online, uh, then they get to understand and be educated more about it. And they get to see if they resonate with you much more so than if they just saw some fleeting, you know, social media post or, or ad and that kind of thing. So what can you do though right now when you might feel restricted with, well, we can't get large groups together and, you know, that kind of thing, depending on what, what part of the country you're in. So if you are in that situation, then you can look at doing things like webinars or interviews or Facebook lives or, or YouTube videos um, for example, I had a, a client of mine who was featured through a Facebook live to her church and she ended up getting patients from it using our, our structures and systems in terms of, okay, well, what do you say? Right. It's not, not just getting visibility, but also, uh-huh. um, you know, being able to translate that into patients. So those are a few different avenues that are, are working really well right now. And uh, there's one thing I also wanted to say too about the speaking side of things. And then, then what's really key about that working is then also, so what I recommend is having a, a talk in place that is one main talk, like a signature talk that you can use over and over again. So it's not like every time you're speaking, you have to feel like, oh my gosh, I have to go and create something. And it's just, but instead you just create one signature talk that is, has been created, uh, for the purpose of, of not only educating people, but also inspiring them to, to either book with you to become patient of yours or, or with whatever it is that you're offering from the talk. And then something that could be adapted for, you know, in things like interviews. And, and then the other thing is just, you know, where to get booked and, and then also having the systems that support getting the referrals coming in, but it's, it's totally doable. You know, I've, I've clients who are continuing to get new patients right now because of doing this and 
you can be literally at home and, you know, not have to leave the house. <laughs> Just like you and I are right now, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, everyone's looking for those ways to to get themselves out there and the opportunities to to still build their practice. And so these are great ideas. So I appreciate you being on here. Can you tell us how the listeners can get a hold of you or find connect with you? Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. Yes. So, and then, um, as far as, as taking this further, um, you can go to introverted visionary.com forward slash lifestyle practice. And, you know, for those of you who are in a place where you are feeling like you are just slow right now and want to be busier or especially because of, of these times or just that that is just slow or you might actually be in a place where you are already busy but there's only one of you to go around and and only so much time in the day and you're starting to feel more burnt out and, and can't see this happening much longer before you really burn yourself out and, uh, and would like to have more free time back in, in your life and, you know, have a life more and, um, and then be able to spend more time with your kids or, or just have more, more time to yourself too. So feel free to book a, um, a chat with us and happy to see how we can help. So a free strategy session. And, and that's, you know, when you go to that link, you'll be able to book in with us and, and then the, you'll also be able to get those templates that I promised you. So the email, texting, social media templates, uh -huh. uh, you can use right away to bring patients in now. Also, um, you know, we talked about the, I can't afford it thing that some of you may be hearing more of lately. So we have an introverted visionaries, six figures plus mastermind where we're helping our clients go from six to seven figures and uh, in a way that's like, it's more introverted versus you know, having to always be putting yourself out there kind of thing. Right. So, uh -huh. and so in that mastermind, we actually got together once and, um, everyone wrote down some of the, the things that they're hearing from patients about why they're, they're not wanting to come in right now. And then, um, also put in there what, what, how to address it that's been working. And, and I've also added what I've seen has been working for clients too. So it's in that, that template. Um, and then the, the doctor referral script that of, you know, when you want to approach a mutual patient to start getting, to get your, you know, your foot in the door with interest from um, a medical doctor to refer. So I'm going to include those templates that you can just download and use in your practice to, to help you bring patients in um, quickly. And um, yeah, so, so I'll give that link, link again. It's introvertedvisionary.com forward slash lifestyle practice. And yeah, I look forward to giving you insight and uh, into your practice and growing it more, more effectively. So I think those are all very helpful. So I hope everyone visits. We'll have the link in our social media and in the blog post for this episode. So thank you so much, Chen, for being on today. We appreciate your help and appreciate you for helping support our profession. Thanks again. Yes. Thank you so much for having me here today. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, please share it with your friends on Instagram and Facebook. And for those of you who are already subscribers, we really appreciate it. Thanks for the reviews. We love reading those and knowing that you're loving the podcast. If you're looking for more tips and inspiration, be sure to check us out at lifestylepracticebuilders.com or join our business and marketing Facebook group for chiropractors at facebook.com slash group slash lifestyle practice.